Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post on tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. Before we get started, I am announcing the winner to my last video's giveaway. If you missed out, I am sending one lucky winner the limited edition cover acrylic pro kit from Kiara Sky. It is a good one, so I hope you enjoy this kit. Without further ado, our winner for the giveaway is Life as Anna. I hope you enjoy it. Congratulations, message me so I can send that right out to you. And thank you so much for your sweet and kind words. It means a ton. Now getting into today's video, I am starting off by removing my design that I currently have on my nails. I did do a video on that. So if you're interested in checking that out, it will be linked in this video. I am starting off by using my e-file at a speed of about nine to 10,000 RPMs. Along with that, I am using the Kiara Sky 5-in-1 bit medium grit in the color rose gold. But I am basically starting off by gently filing off that design. And as you can see, I have quite a bit of lifting. So while I am removing the design, I am also going to be thinning out that acrylic near the cuticle area to be able to fully remove that lifting. If you are new to my channel, I pride myself in nails that have zero lifting and if you are an OG on my channel, you must have seen all of my videos where I do fills and there's really no lifting. <laughs> this video is the opposite, which I honestly am pretty excited to be able to kind of share with you guys my process on removing lifting if and when it happens. Now, you may be asking yourself, what the heck happened? Why do I have so much lifting? And the answer honestly is quite simple. I was a terrible picker through this set of nails. <laughs> I don't know what is going on. I don't know why I was doing it, but I was definitely biting, picking, just being all kinds of rude to my nails. Therefore, that led to all the lifting that you see. And it kind of goes to show you how not being careful and not taking care of your nails can lead to lifting. You want to make sure you are fully removing lifting from your nails if you have acrylic or really any kind of enhancements. As if you are not aware, that can cause moisture to be trapped in there and trust me you do not want all that yuckiness in there if you do not know why make sure you do your research and get educated in that area as it can be a really bad thing but i'm not going to get into that in today's video i'm just going to share with you guys how i remove all of that lifting and do a fill successfully so for my process, I'm basically taking my e-file still at a pretty fast speed of about 9 to 10,000 RPMs. It's what I'm comfortable with. If you feel like you need to lower the speed, by all means, do so. You want to be careful and not hurt yourself or your client. So please use the speed that works for you. So I'm basically taking my 5-in-1 bit at the tip and really just filing around the lifted area. So you will be able to see lifting by the color of it. And as you can see, my nails are nude. So the lifted area is a lot wider or lighter if you consider it that on the areas that are lifting. So whenever you are filing, you want to file on the area that is still the nude color. So I'm going to be focusing on that area versus on the white area. So you'll see me take my bit and really go around that. And what that's going to cause is to really thin that area out and be able to just nicely chip away the lifted area. So I'm going to be focusing again on the nude right next to the lifting. And then once we get it nice and thin with our mandrel bit, we will be able to fully remove that. Now it is really important that you are very cautious when doing this as you can really damage your nail or hurt yourself if you're not. Mm-hmm. 
Now for my pinky, I'm taking a hand file and just filing the rest of that design off. It's just a lot easier in my opinion on my pinky specifically. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna be fully removing that lifting and prepping our natural nails. Now for our prep, we are going to be taking my e-file now at a speed of about 4,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using my mandrel bit from Profiles Backstage along with their purple sanding bands in medium grit. These are super, super fine. So if you have any concerns of it being too coarse, trust me, it is not. Now to fully remove that lifting, I'm just going to be carefully filing on top of it because it is already very thin from the work we did with our five in one bit. This should be a pretty easy process. So I'm just going again on that area that we were filing originally and then lightly filing on the actual lifted part and it's gonna come right off, or at least it should. If it doesn't, go ahead and take your five in one bit again and then just file it down as thin as possible. Honestly speaking, if you are using your mandrel bit, that should be able to thin it out as well. I just like to do the most minimal amount of work with my mandrel bit and get the bulk of it done with my five in one as it is a lot stronger than this one. Now once I'm done removing that white acrylic, I'm gonna go ahead and just gently buff the shine off of my natural nail, which is part of my typical prep for fills. And I'm gonna go ahead and move on to our next nail. Now again, I'm focusing on that nude acrylic and using very light tapping motions, I'm going to be able to remove that lifted area. Now it is important that you use very light pressure and continue to move across the nail so that you do not cause heat spike. And then again, I'm gonna fully buff the shine off of my natural nail. We're gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails and I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys watch that.
Next for our prep process, normally I use a needle bit and it has been my go-to since day one. However, I unfortunately lost that bit. So I dug through my stuff and I found this in my collection of bits. This one is from Profiles Backstage. I'm not quite sure what the name of it is, but it is a lot smaller than what you guys are used to seeing on my channel. I will leave the name on the screen for you guys and linked in the description box so you guys can check that out. I'm not gonna lie, this thing is amazing. It works even better than the one I was using. Honestly, it's probably because the one I was using was really old, but this one is really, really good. Now, as you can see, I am using that around the cuticle area to fully remove that dead skin that you may have missed from the mandrel bit. And this is my favorite part of prep because it is just so satisfying to me seeing how much dead skin comes off of that nail. Now this is really important to prevent lifting. Of course, as mentioned earlier in the video, you wanna make sure you're taking care of your nails. Do not pick at them. But this is going to be a game changer when it comes to any lifting issues. I'm gonna go ahead and file still at a speed of 4,000 RPMs with very light pressure on that nail. And of course, next is our cuticle area. For that, I am using my OG cuticle ball bit and I am just gently filing off that cuticle. I still have the e-file at a very low speed of 5,000 RPMs and again, very light pressure for this process. I love this bit because it just gently buffs everything off without having to cut anything. If you do have a little bit more of stubborn cuticle, I just would suggest to up your speed very lightly and it should do the trick. I've definitely had to do that with some clients and it works perfectly fine. Once I'm done with all my filing, I am taking a lint-free wipe and some Young Nail Swipe. You can also use alcohol for this step, but I'm just quickly cleaning the surface of my nail while dehydrating all at the same time. Now for the last and final prep process, I am prepping my nail with a primer from Not Polish. This is their Triple X Bond. I absolutely love it and I swear by it, so definitely recommend it if you're looking for a really good primer. Once we're done applying our primer, we're going straight into our acrylic application. For today's video, I am using the Not Polish Acrylic Brush in the size 12. Along with that, I'm using their monomer as well. And per my last set, this is called Nude Me from Not Polish as well. Really pretty nude. It goes well with every skin tone, so highly recommend it if you're looking for a very versatile color. Now for my thumb, when doing a fill, I like to work with several beads just because I want to make sure that I'm applying it properly versus applying one big bead and having it run all over the place since I don't have that much stability with my non-dominant hand. So I'm going ahead and starting off with one bead and then just adding a bit of acrylic wherever is needed and just infilling those areas very, very carefully. You wanna make sure you do not let it flow into your skin or your cuticle area as that will also cause lifting. So make sure you are doing this very, very carefully. Now when doing your nails with your non-dominant hand, it is a little bit tricky to hold your hand in a downward position as you want to essentially look at the nail. So I like to stabilize my hand on something to be able to fully apply file and all that good stuff. I feel like it's just helpful to stabilize your hand now for the acrylic application it is a little bit tricky because you're basically holding your hand upwards versus when you're applying acrylic you want it to be downwards so that the product flows down instead of up into your cuticle area so if you are able to do so highly suggest flip your hand around and point your nails downwards as that will help prevent overflow into the cuticle area. I'm not able to do that, so I'm kind of just working very, very quickly. I apply the bead 
and immediately start working the product down. Or I guess I should say up into the tip because my hand is tilted upwards. So I am very, very quickly, as you can see, trying to avoid overflow. And if I do get a little bit, I quickly clean it up as best as possible. You wanna make sure you are really, really trying to lift that back up as that can still cause lifting if you let it overflow too much. I'm gonna go ahead and infill any other little areas that I feel like need a little bit more thickness. And then we are going to be filing these nails. Now when it comes to filing with my non-dominant hand, I prefer to use a hand file. It just gets the job done a lot quicker than having to struggle with my e-file. So I'm starting off with my sides of the nail, then the tip, and then working on the surface of the nail. Again, like I mentioned, I like to stabilize my hand on something so that I have full control of that file and my hand isn't moving all over the place. I'm gonna go ahead and start off at the cuticle area and then just work my way down. And then whenever filing for the most part on the surface, I will use my right hand to aid my filing process versus trying to file just using my non-dominant hand. So I will multitask and use both hands at the same time to get the job done a lot quicker.
I am going to be buffing these nails with my sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage. This is honestly optional for this specific set as I'm going to be doing crystals and I don't necessarily need the surface to be smooth. You can honestly go in with your top coat and it should be fine. However, it's just part of my process now so I went ahead and did it. It's too late now to turn around and back again. Now, after I quickly dusted off that excess dust, I am thoroughly cleaning the surface of my nails with the lint free wipe and young nail swipe once again. You can always wash your hands if that is what you prefer. I just like this because it's a lot quicker. Now for today's video, we are blinging out my nails. As you noticed from the thumbnail, I am sharing with you guys the bling it kit from Not Polish. This is the red collection and I am so in love with these crystals. They're so pretty and super, super sparkly. The red is also to die for, so highly recommend if you want some nice chunky crystals now for this design i'm honestly kind of just winging it i know i wanted it to go straight down the middle so i'm starting off with one big crystal and then i'm basically working my way outwards and i'm going to be doing the exact same thing that i do to the top or the bottom on the opposite so i start off with that diamond those two crystals and then we are basically mirroring that design on top and bottom and it's going to create kind of like a chunky to skinnier line right in the middle. And I feel like this is always like a good little accent nail if you're wanting bling but not crazy amount of bling. Now for the ring finger, we are going to be doing kind of a chunky design up top. And then it's also going to taper into a point right down the middle. So that's essentially where I'm going to be placing the gel. And then I kind of just go from there. I will try to have some sort of image in my head of what exactly I want to create but otherwise I just go with it again I'm starting off with a big crystal and then I'm going to be infilling areas that I feel need to be infilled so when working with larger crystals a lot of the time they won't fully lay flat on the nail especially if you do more of a curved nail so what I like to do to avoid any snagging on the points of the bigger crystals is I like to apply a small crystal where the point is at. So I went ahead and placed that large crystal, realized that I should probably infill that and I went ahead and applied a circle crystal right where it can snag. Crystals the size of these that tend to stick up will be a little bit tricky to kind of do day-to-day -day stuff with just because they can cause some sort of snagging like if you run your hand through your hair it will kind of get stuck in there so you want to make sure you kind of basically encapsulate the crystals in place without any of the sides sticking up at all whatsoever so this gel really helps with that as it is nice and thick and they will be cushioned on there so if you use glue a lot of the time it's a lot more thin which lays a lot flatter on the nail which will cause the crystal to be a little bit lifted on the sides that's just my personal opinion and from my experience of working with crystals and applying crystals. It might be different for you guys, but that's kind of what I've noticed with the larger ones. So just a quick little tip if you guys have issues with that and want to prevent all of that. Now for the middle finger, we are going to be adding it on the majority of the nail. And again, I'm starting off with one crystal and then working my way, especially on this nail. I am going to be using tons of different sized crystals depending on where I want them to be placed. I am going to be infilling those areas with larger or smaller crystals. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys watch that process and kind of see where my brain goes when applying them. So we can get a little closer now. you 
told you I wish that I could stay What if I told you you took my breath away All I see is blessings, got no time for stressing Don't believe in failures in my life, it's only lessons They just make a room for what I'm on now I don't got a clue, but I know the one who does know how Oh wow It's like I'm learning the game with the maker I already know now Destiny has my name, no it's coming, it'll never go I know that we all gonna be alright We gon' make it through if it takes us all night No matter what the odds may bring our way I can see the blessings coming our way, yeah, yeah, yeah Blessings on blessings, yeah I can see the blessings coming our way, our way, our way Blessings on blessings, yeah I can see the blessings coming our way I can't say that life's been perfect Or complain cause life's been worth it And all because of who he is, is working I'll be working out for my God And no more living in that fear No more tears and all, no Oh, he's working me and molding me Now I did forget to mention, this is gel, so you want to make sure you are curing in between nails, otherwise they will move around while you're working on the other ones. Now I did go ahead and leave out the index finger just because it is the exact same design that I did on the pinky. And then for the thumb, because my nail is so tiny, I forgot to also mention why my nail is so tiny. I struggle unbuckling my baby from her car seat, so I want to make sure that they are nice and short so I can do so successfully without breaking any nails. So I'm gonna go ahead and just apply two little crystals on that nail and then I'm taking my 3D nail art brush and just kind of flattening out the excess since I did add a little bit too much on that nail. I wanna make sure that it's nice and flat so when I top coat, there's not any ridges on the nude part of the nail. Lord, make me better. Take me, shape me. Now once we're done with our design and everything is cured into place, I am going in with my top coat. This is Matte It From Not Polish. If you have not seen matte nails with crystals, it just makes the crystals bling so much better. So I had to do that as well. I'm gonna go ahead and top coat around the crystals, especially because I'm using matte top coat. You want to really, really be careful and not apply any of that on the crystals. If it's shiny, I actually will sometimes go in between the crystals just to fully, fully secure them in place. But because I'm not gonna be wearing these for a very long time, I am not too concerned and I am definitely very, very sure that these crystals are not going anywhere, especially with that gel that I used. So again, just very carefully going around the crystals and top coating the nude portion of the nail. Dale, dale, sin pasar. Todo mundo hate. 
Now once we are out of the light, I am putting some cuticle oil on my crusty cuticles. I'm taking Goddess from Profiles Backstage and it is my favorite scent and it is such a good cuticle oil altogether. I'm just carefully going around and then I am massaging it very, very gently. Again, carefully trying to avoid the matte top coat so that I do not contaminate it with shininess. You definitely do not want that. But that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a ton. And I will see you guys next time.